Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. In this video we'll be talking about export options and I'll be exporting to Unity, the game engine and Sketchfab, the online store. But this will be relevant to wherever you want to export it to. Check the links in the description for more educational content such as this. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available. Again, follow the links in the description. Okay, so here's where we got to last time and we're going to take this into a game engine. There's a couple of things we need to do to prepare it. Let's go across to layout mode. Now it's still in lots of separate pieces, so we need to join it together. So we can select everything. Make sure you have an actual active object. So one of these must be highlighted yellow and we can press Control J. Now it may be that you want to smarten up some edges, maybe like in the scope here, you can kind of see the corners, a really slight bit there. And now they're attached together, that makes it a little bit easier. But it's something I'm not going to worry about because I don't think it really affects the model. Now there is one slight issue. You have lots of extra verts because let's say where this bit joined this bit, we haven't actually merged the vertices that were separate. So although they're touching and they're joined and it won't actually make any difference in Unity, it is more optimal to join them together. And it's not difficult either. We can select everything and press M to merge by distance and we can see that we've lost those 157 vertices. Okay, let's go back into object mode. One other thing that you might want to do is double check that it's shaded smooth. So right click and then shade smooth. That makes sure your whole object is definitely shaded smooth and there's not going to be any sort of hard lines on it when you take it into an engine. So it all must be smooth shaded. The last thing that might be useful if I go to front view like this, my object center is here and it might be that you want the object center more around the trigger and also it's good practice to make sure your center point is at zero. So let's press shift S to move the cursor to the world origin. Let's position our weapon by G to grab and move it to where we want the center point to roughly be, maybe somewhere around here. And then right click, set origin to 3D cursor. And that's moved our origin to there. Now when I rotate it, let's say it's firing or something like that, it can rotate around that area there. Okay, now we should be ready for export. Now lots of game engines can actually import a Blender file, but just to make sure we're completely compatible, let's go to File, Export, and probably FBX. OBJ is another really good one for game engines, but I'll choose FBX. The files are just a little bit easier to manage. You'll have this dialog box here. You can see I've already done it. So I'll call it Blunderbuss Complete once again. Make sure you've got selected objects only, then that won't export things like a light or camera or reference images or whatever you might have in there. The scale doesn't matter too much in this case because I haven't really thought much about the scale. So you'll have to resize it in engine. And to be fair, it's something I don't really worry about too much. I haven't had any complaints from people when I've given it to them. But we could have used real life scale and thought about the actual size of this object. And that's probably good practice really. The other thing about FBX is that the minus Z is forward. So if we're looking forward into our scene, Blenders is actually minus Y. So I'm going to change that to minus Y and that should end up in unity facing the right direction. You can adjust this, it doesn't make too much difference, but it's just so it'll go in and be the same as Blender. And then we can press export FBX. Okay, so I've opened up unity and I can find my Blunderbuss FBX file and drag and drop it in. You'll also need the texture file as well. So Blunderbuss color four was what I was using. And obviously make sure you have saved the up-to-date version of that. Then in Unity, I can click and drag this into my scene. I'll press F to frame, and there's our Blunderbuss object. Let's create a material for it. So right click, create material, Blunderbuss. And now the type of material, you can work with the standard shader. You have to bring the smoothness right down and bring the Blunderbuss texture into the albedo. Drag and drop it like this. I'll drag that material onto my Blunderbuss now so we can see it. And you can see it's being affected by the light, which we don't want. And that's the most important thing when you're using hand-painted textures. The texture shouldn't be affected by the light, so it should be sort of unlit. So to do that with the standard shader, we'd actually have to have the emission ticked and drag that into the color slot here as well. And you can see now it's working. So that's with the standard shader. Not that we really want to use that. There is an option here, if we click on the standard shader, to go down to unlit. And we can use an unlit texture and it's got that texture already inserted and that's working fine too. So you can see the final results here. It's quite a rich sort of color, the way it interprets these colors in Unity. And you might want to adapt your textures brightness in an image manipulation program. 
like Photoshop, GIMP or Critter, to name just a few, but that's basically how you bring it into a game engine so it's nice and easy. So what about something like Sketchfab? Well, Sketchfab is a great site where you can view models in 3D like this beautiful car here, and you can actually go into the models and move around. What I like about Sketchfab is that you can show off your models and topology, and you can sell your models as well, which is fantastic. So you go to the upload icon here. Once again, drag and drop my blunderbuss, upload files. It shouldn't take too long because it's a very small file, nice and low poly. Give it a suitable title, nice description, add a category, some tags. I'm going to actually sell this. So if you want to support me, you can buy this blunderbuss model. I'll save that. Go across to my 3D settings. Now we can see this is upside down because Sketchfab uses a different method. So we can change the Y and just rotate it around twice like that. And now it's the right way up. Shading, we want this shadeless. Let's go across to our materials now. And we can bring in our base color just here. So I'll click on that, click on texture import textures, find my blunderbuss color four, open that up, choose that texture, and there it is. It's a little bit dark, and that's partially to do with the background color. So let's go across to the scene again, onto the background, and let's choose a more dull color, and probably the blues, because that brings out the oranges a bit. I'll make it fairly bright, somewhere around here, because I can add a vignette and sort of focus people's attention on the middle. Let's look at that material again. There is an emission option here, and we could bring in our texture here, which is sort of going off the screen a bit, but you can see my texture down here. And when it's added as an emission, you can see it looks much more like what we had in Blender. And you can actually up the strength of this emission if you want it brighter or not. But I think one should be effective. It should be the same as it is in Blender. Okay, so it's looking fairly good. We can go to the post-processing filters, and I think a vignette will help here. You can see that focuses it on the center. So let's just change the settings of that maybe bring the hardness down a bit, but the amount up. So it brings it right in like this. It's a bit dark that, but I'll increase the brightness in a second. So somewhere around there, back to the actual background and just bring that brightness up. And then we've got this nice sort of focus on our item. Might be a little dark, so back to the post-processing, bring that amount down just a little bit. Maybe the softness up, somewhere around there anyway. There's some other things you can play with, maybe a little bit of sharpness if we turn that on. It's a bit too much there, but if we turn this down to maybe 0.1, just add that little bit of sharpness might help it and help people see the textures a bit more. Maybe some chromatic aberration that can look quite nice, but again, turn it right down, maybe something like 0 0.02. See what that looks like, still a little bit too much. So 0 0.01, it's like a photographic effect. Just helps slightly with the stylization. Then just play a little bit with the settings, see what it looks like with things turned on and off. You might want some stylized grain in there as well and all these sort of things. Perhaps some shininess with the bloom, but don't go overboard. Probably tone that down a little bit. Some people don't like these effects and I can understand why. <laughs> you might want to look at the color balance as well, like tone mapping and just play with these different tones a little bit. That's possibly all right there. Find a nice angle and then save the view. Let's just make sure we're right in the center there. And then we can publish. And I'll put this link in the description if you want to take a look. Just a quick note, one thing I did change was I pushed the scope up really slightly. I just extended all these verts upwards so the scope looks over the end of the barrel. Because some people might not like the magic scope idea. So that's how to load into a game engine and upload to Sketchfab. Most game engines are very similar to this in terms of the way they interpret the textures and use textures. So it should be very similar in something like Unreal and so on. Hope you've enjoyed the series. If you've got any thoughts and comments, then do let me know. You can go across to the Discord server and chat to me there and give me any suggestions. Do make sure you tag me at Grant to make sure I see your comment. Thanks for all your support throughout this. Let me know what you want to see next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.